Hi, and welcome back to the Kung Fu Book Review. Um, today we are going to be looking at the Bilgy, okay? The Thrusting Fingers set by Grandmaster Lian Ting, who is standing on a platform in a white silk suit here in front of his army of followers. Um, and he's got another subtitle here, the set, the theory, main points, mottos and applications. Um, now this is a real, you know, so it's a really wonky, interesting book. Uh, it's got some really good points and a few bad points, but overall I think excellent actually. Um, it's one of the few short to the point books that's actually written on the third set of Wing Chun, right? So it's quite difficult to find information about the third set of Wing Chun because it is like the secret hidden one with the hidden techniques and it doesn't leave the family. It's, it's changing now, but like back when I first started learning, it was like whispered in hushed tones and only in the advanced class would it ever be practiced, you know, the senior, senior class and to close doors and no one would be able to see it. And it was all, all, all hush, hush. Um, nowadays, of course, um, everyone in this uh, photo is all doing their little bill, bill style underneath the arms, you know, thrusting fingers, right? So, um, so I think there's some, you know, like, Lian Ting is an interesting figure because he's, uh, he's, he's good, but he's also a bit weird, right? So, and I think that's, that this book reflects that. Good, but a bit weird. Um, so uh, you get a lot of, so let me tell you a little bit about Lian Ting. So, um, uh, so Lian Ting was, I think he was the last, the very last disciple of Yip Man. And it was kind of like squidged in the door at the end, right? When Yip Man was old and maybe not teaching so much stuff. Um, and he was kind of, you know, rich family, like maybe I think some health conditions. Um, and, uh, you know, and I think it was maybe it was his uncle or something that kind of squidged him in there and managed to get him. And he sort of trained a bit and he was a bit of a troublemaker. He's a bit, he's a bit of an arrogant dude, but he's also like a little tiny nerd as well. So like it's um, he's a weird mix of things. Right. This this chap, because, yeah, he's a little tiny geeky nerd, but is also I mean, the one thing that comes across from him is a vast sense of insecurity, right? Like, because uh, in every part of his book as well, you get huge sections like, this is him training with him. This is him, you know, helping out special forces. And um, and here's him in Thailand, um, you know, as a grandmaster presenting stuff. But he's an excellent practitioner, right? And he's been training for years and years and years and years and has developed quite a lot of the material. Like, I really like some of his... Um, he did an early on a video, uh, which is, I think is a VHS, but maybe on DVD. Uh, you can probably find it floating around the internet somewhere where he basically laid out the entire Wing Chun system, you know, uh, in two hours, two and a half hours. And it's great. You know, it's like all the forms, Chi Sao, weapons, uh, table fighting, um, applications, theory, um, all in there, right? Like, I'm like, bam, that's great. He's done more than perhaps many of the other teachers for opening up the Wing Chun system, um, including writing this book, which, um, you know, sort of one of the few books that I've been able to find about the Bilgi that really, you know, lays out the whole form, talks about the, th the principles and the theory. So, yeah, so there's there's some great strengths there. Um, but also, you know, I'm, I'm not the hugest fan of the, the, the way that his students move and, the, and the, the training and the syllabus, right? And I have trained with some of those, some of his guys. Um, and I think that there are, um, you know, he, he's very good on the theory and the principles, but I think that there are better practitioners out there, um, is my general overall experience. Um, and, and it would be good if he could just let go of the shameless self-promotion and just say, no, oh, I've, I've been doing it for all these years and I'm, you know, just to have a look and see how I am, but uh, yeah. So how, how does so this book is a weird little book. It's got lots of photographs. It's got lots of it's got like 20, 15 pages of pumping up the author, which is and self promotion, and then of course got to sell all the other books and uh, manuals and courses and everything on it as well. Um, and uh, oh yeah, that's of course because he has this huge organization, right? So with his alternative spelling, Wing Sun, right? So. Um, for probably for marketing purposes. Um, 
so but then once you get past that fluff and that wrapper um, then the book begins to open up in a good way so um, the meaning and theory so as I always say in these in these uh, things you know what is the purpose of a book in the modern martial arts world it's in that reflective part of your practice and um, he's got quite good sections on the on the theory um, so you know and he talks about all the different uh, things again but you, you see you get bits of self-promotion in there so it's like it's like you know power penetrating to the fingers okay so that's cool that's a good principle but then we get you know look he can hit a bronze bell with the chi force of his arm okay brilliant um we don't really care about that okay we want to learn the theory right <laughs> you know so um he talks a little bit about the history as well about the number of repetitions and why you repeat things in forms which is interesting um uh, a little bit about which techniques have been added afterwards. Um, then, okay, so then there's a section which is not particularly useful, right? Which is the whole of his version of the bilgi. So the bilgi varies significantly depending on who you learn it from, right? Because it seems that Ip Man taught a few different students different bits and maybe some of them didn't learn the whole thing, you know, so, uh, and then maybe some of them, so for example, my main lineage was the Wanshan Leon lineage, right, and uh, Wanshan Leon was like not a fan of forms at all, uh, so he taught very stripped down versions of the forms, right, which just focused on the power generation um, and a few key mechanics, right, so, and then if you look at that compared to some of the other guys, they have a lot more details in their forms um, and movement quality, etc., right, because they were more interested in it. Um, so yeah, so then you get the, you know, the, the 60, 70 pages of, uh, you know, fortunately he's got his shirt on, right? So the one defense of Leon Ting is that he's never shirtless in any of his books, at least that I've seen so far. Um, but you do get lots of these still photographs um, without really any explanation. Um, maybe a little bit of text for each one, uh, brief descriptions. But then the book begins to grow again and you know it's like oh it's like I was just getting to the point where I'm like oh this is rubbish but then each of the techniques is broken down with the rationality so it goes through the form in sequence saying okay this movement that I just showed you here this is the reason for why it's done this way so you get some theory then you get some practical application and then a bit more theory all right so why should you do the elbows what's the diagonal elbow like and quite often you get the applications from Chi Sao um, and the way the shots are done, they correspond directly to the, to the speaking. Um, oh, yeah, it is uh, clearly been printed in, uh, I'll say a little bit about the typography and stuff. It's clearly a Cantonese printing. So it's been printed in, in a, you know, Hong Kong press. Um, so the way that the characters and everything are presented are definitely a bit whack. Um, so it's, I think it's kind of, again, it's been translated into English afterwards. And then the way because you get the you get this weird thing where you get the um, the comp, the traditional characters and then the simplified characters after them, but no pinionization. So again, most of the characters are there presented for uh, a sort of a Hong Kong audience who would you know oh they look at that and then they might want to see what it looks like in the simplified, for example. So, but if you're a Westerner, it's just like okay, there's a bunch of squiggles after the the, the word in. A pronunciation that I'm not quite sure whether it's Cantonese or, or you know, so, and it is Cantonese pronunciation throughout this. Um, okay, so but anyway, so aside from that, so the type and also the typography is a bit rough, you know, jet jitters around all over the place with some. Um, this is a general criticism of Leon Ting's books is that he's got he uses um, underlining in the middle of text, black, you know, uh, bold but then also uh, italics in different circumstances and it's not consistent. Um, uh, again, this is partly a product of the way that some Chinese books go uh, and it hasn't been translated across very well. Um, but this is a general criticism for a lot of books of this era um, that come out of the Hong Kong and Taiwanese press because uh, they weren't used to writing in Western standards in the Western audience. Um, then yeah so and he and like i said the rest of the book is going through each of these sections with and the nice thing is that he really breaks down the history of how it changed and you know what he learned from it man what he's thought about afterwards um how the technique is used and um you know what the theory is behind how to apply it correctly and then with some explanations and, and images as well so that bit is all good 
um, all the and yeah, he just goes through all of these in turn. Um, and then he finishes off with a little bit about incorrect movements and uh, a nice little point about that there's no such thing as secret techniques. Um, now there are slightly hidden movements that need to be explained a little bit more, but there's no super secret technique that you don't practice and that you know that, that's going to make you awesome or is indestructible and can defeat any other technique. So I think that's a really important point that he raises as well because um, that happens in in Chinese martial arts as well. You get these you get these bad ideas that crop up every now and then. So he's been really good at you know, dispelling that stuff and keeping it practical and focused and real and based on the principles. So like I said, you know, he's an interesting character um, and his uh, his books are, are a reflection of that, you know, so it's kind of, you get a mixed bag, you get some good and some bad in there. Uh, overall, I say if you're doing Wing Chun it's um, and you're up to the point where you're learning the Bilgy, uh, I would you know, I'd give a sort of half a thumbs up. I'd say, you know, it's it's not that, it's not a big book, it's not that expensive, you know, Go for it. Um, it'd probably be different to the version that you're learning, but the theory and principles at the beginning and the end of the book are, are good and they'll help you improve your practice. So overall, I say mm, sort of like half a thumbs up for this one. Uh, it's an interesting, strange little book, but uh, it does have some nuggets of wisdom in there. Good. Um, yeah, let me know if you want me to look at any of his other books. Um, because uh, yeah, there's there's he's got some gems, um, but he's also got some duds. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, and uh, I hope all your practice is going well. Please like, share, and subscribe. Do check out my other video series as well, which hopefully should be live as of the production of this video. So which is the thirty day qigong journey, where we basically just sit and do um, some nice relaxing qigong, some stretching, introduce standing meditation. Uh, and then maybe some some breath work as well. So just really good healing practice, non-martial, um, just that you can do at home in 30, 40 minutes or so. Good. Uh, hope to see you all soon and best of luck with your practice, everyone.